Yes, I guess it's time. So, uh, welcome to the talk about progressive web applications. Um, my name is Mikko Hämäläinen and you can find me in Twitter or whatever it's called nowadays with that handle. And um, yeah, the idea is that this is essentially a sales presentation. It's not going to be a technical one because I guess you guys are probably better than I am in, in creating application. Um, I come from the perspective that I've been before joining Druid and about 10 years ago, uh, I was a salesperson and a project manager and I worked with, uh, with modern JavaScript, JavaScript applications and, uh, and some native application development. So this is kind of like uh, where that meets Drupal. But anyway, so the problem is that the native mobile applications suck. There's a lot of things that are wrong with them. So they're basically they're oversized and overpowered compared to what is typically needed. I mean, most of the time when you have an application, it's basically it's just glorified forms. I'm not talking about games, but when you're making a reservation, when you're browsing through your Twitter or Facebook feed and so on. So it's just like displaying information and at best it's basically you're just filling in a form to make a reservation. So there's absolutely no reason for you to download a 100 megabyte application just to, I don't know, like rent a video or something. Another thing that's wrong with applications uh, is that they're permission greedy and they really, really like to stalk you as a user. They're holding, hoarding resources and also the the process of installing them is a bit burdensome. So when you're actually like uh, going to a website and you want to do something, uh, instead of doing that on that particular web web website where you should be do, uh, being able to do that, they actually direct you to some app store where you need to start installing application and downloading stuff. Then the one thing is that they're really slow to update and they're pretty expensive to maintain. Nowadays we have two main mobile platforms, the one from Google and the one from Apple. So that's already an improvement uh, based on, uh, compared to the time when we had Symbian and the Windows Mobile and, and, and whatnot. But you still need to keep several code bases up to date and that all costs money. Uh, and one thing uh, to add is that the content is not discoverable by search engines. So basically, whatever you have in your uh, mobile application cannot be found by any search. Um, so it's expensive, it requires co commitment, it needs to have uh, like multiple development teams, one for the platform, or then you have need to have re like really talented people working for you. And, and in most cases, things could be done better using just a plain web service. But it's not all evil. So there are a bunch of benefits related to native applications. So once you have them installed, that's the difficult part. They are really quick to start and they're really fast to use. It's like uh, just, just uh, by with a one press of an icon, you, the uh, application is open. You don't need to remember or type in any URLs or do any separate lo logins. So they have 157% better conversion rates. Uh, good retention rates, uh, you have the offline usage, and you have the push notifications that you can use to get the user return to your applications. So these are the native mobile applications are best for the services that you use really often because you, you, you get to like, uh, it's re really easy to get back to the application. So that brings us to the subject of progressive web applications. Uh, back in the days, good old days, when the iPhone was released, in, uh, I think it was around uh, in 2007, uh, there was an Apple convention and, and Steve Jobs mentioned that in the future people don't need to install applications to the web, uh, the app stores, but they can utilize web 2.0 techniques and, and get their application directly from the web and use them on, natively on, on their phone. Then around 2000, and, well, nothing really happened <laughs> in between. I mean, yeah, JavaScript uh, improved and lots of, lots of like technical things improved. But uh, it was only in 2015 when two engineers from Google presented the idea of a progressive ap web application with the manifest file, with the, with, the, with the service workers and the whole shebang we have nowadays. Um, and again, there was like uh, this standstill period. Uh, 
the you, at that point you were you were able to use the PV, uh, PWA applications in the, in Chrome on Android, but the support for the different APIs, different capabilities was. Uh, was really depended on what which platform you were using. It was only in 2023, uh, so last year when Apple decided that now it's a good time to get the, the push notifications working on, on the iOS platform for the PWAs. Uh, so the thing is that this year, uh, just recently, Apple just decided that uh, we just need to have the money from the from, from the applications, and they actually disabled the PWA support in their la in their latest uh, iOS version. So the 17.2 uh, beta doesn't anymore have uh, the PWA support uh, within Europe, and this is all because of the Digital Market Act. So as you might have read um, in the internet that they have, there was this like a problem between Apple and the Epic Games regarding Fortnite. They wanted to have, uh, they didn't want to give a share to Apple for, for, for whatever people buy in Fortnite. And uh, they kind of went into battle, battle about it and uh, because it's a, it's a monopoly basically and EU, it didn't came in, but at the same, point, same time, EU was kind of worried about these monopolies that you can't like that you have one single platform provider that gets all the money, and there's no like possibility of having another app stores in within the iOS. So, EU did uh, did this like a digital market act that came in effect like really recently, and uh, that actually allows Epic Games to develop their own app store. In, in iOS so that they can sell their own games through that app store. They don't need to give a share about the, to Apple. But as a, side, as a side effect, Apple wasn't really happy about it. And, and they actually, actually just decided that uh, since with this act, it's, uh, they need to allow other web browsers or web browser engines other than WebKit into the game as well. So it wasn't just app stores. Uh, so so since now Apple needed to allow uh, the PWAs to be on some other platforms as well uh, within EU, they kind of said that, okay, that poses a security risk. So we won't be doing that in Europe. So they basically disabled the, the, the PWA capabilities in the applications within European Union. They still work if you go to Australia, if you set your local to states or whatever, you get the PWAs uh, working, uh, but for for us EU citizens, it means that basically they just reverted back to see, uh, bookmarks. You can still use the application, you can still use uh, the JavaScript capabilities. It's just about the service worker and, uh, and, 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 uh, and basically being able to run the application without the browser. Uh, I'm going to show that, show that to you later. Um, but anyways, so what the PWA is basically, it's an installable web application. You do your uh, application with JavaScript using a certain architecture, uh, and then when the user come to the, enter that URL in their, in their mobile phone, sorry, on their laptops, the application can be installed on your computer or mobile phone. Uh, but technically, it's basically just using JavaScript and what and whatever backend technology you, you want to use. Uh, they still have a varying uh, support for the features. Uh, there's a site called caniuse.com, I guess. Uh, you probably already are familiar with that if you work with JavaScript. So that's the place where you can check what APIs or capabilities are supported by which, uh, which uh, browser plat platform. Anyways, so after you install this application, um, you get an icon on your desktop or on your phone, and when you press it, it opens up like a native, ap native application. You are not uh, contained without the browser, in, uh, browser uh, window, but rather it looks exactly like a na native application. So the user experience is really compared to one, one that is native. Um, you can see that uh, it actually combines the benefits of the native applications without going through the app stores. Uh, so, so these are all examples what the other companies gained from 
when they compare their web services to the uh, P what the, the results from their PWAs. So you can see that the uh, the performance improvements, the 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 like the re-engagement, so the people kept coming back to the application just using the icon and so on. And uh, th so those are really comparable to what you would get in native application, but they don't need to go. But the people actually install these easier because they don't need to go through the app stores. Uh, there's a lot of PWAs available nowadays. I mean, the sites or services you might currently be using, they might be t PWAs. You just haven't seen the install banner or noticed that you can actually install that on your, on your uh, mobile phone. And technically, it's really simple. You just have two files. Uh, you have a uh, manifest file, and then you have a service worker JavaScript file. Basically, you can just plug in, uh, plug this into any website. So you create a manifest JSON uh, that uh, contains the basic information about your application, and then you have a service worker that's a JavaScript file, and you just register that in your browser. Um, the manifest file contains information about, let's say, like uh, the name of the application. So when you install that, what appears? What's what's the icon and what's the name of the application that appear on your mobile phone, phone or, or on your desktop? It includes the color scheme of the application. It's basically what happens outside the browser windows, like the top bar and so on. So they need to match the application colors theme and, and, and so on. So these are the things that you basically define in the manifest. And the service worker is kind of like a proxy. It's, it's, a, it's a proxy that uh, manages the caching. It manages the, uh, um, the, the networking and and a bunch of different things. But basically, this enables the applications to explicitly decide what resources they want to cache. They can download them um, like in advance. So for example, when you install the application, you can have a, your service worker to download the most needed resources in advance. And then later, it actually uh, allows you to use the application in offline, because you already have the resources basically on your, on your uh, device. Uh, you can also use the service worker to manage the push notifications, so that's active even when you're not using the mobile application. It means that basically you have a, I don't know the technical details on how you set up the push notification, but basically you have a listener on your phone and the push notification service uh, sends, an, uh, sends a message to this uh, service worker or the listener and that makes sure that the push notification gets displayed. Um, so a simple demo. Uh, this is uh, my favorite, favorite uh, PW application for the demos because it's pretty nice, it's meaningful, and it's if you drink a lot of Starbucks coffee, you can. Uh, that's actually beneficial for you. Uh, apparently, it doesn't work in Finland, but it's good for demos. So, anyways, so we'll go uh, to this address uh, app.starbucks.com, and as you as you can see, it looks pretty much like any website. You have a, it's a bit, the layout is a bit <laughs> like strange to me, but anyways. So what happens is that you don't know, sometimes the PW application display a banner. A bit annoying banner, but it's a good indication that you can install the application, say that, yeah, you can install this thing, please do that, and so on. But uh, for us professionals, uh, if you don't see a banner, you can see this icon here. Uh, you can also find that if you open the application on your mobile phone, there's also an icon. You go to the menu in Android phones, and you can see that instead of uh, add a bookmark, there should be text like install this application. There's a difference. They, if it's not a PWA, it says that add a bookmark, and if it's a, uh, if it's a PWA, it says distincti distinctively that install this application. So when I press this button, it says that please install the application. Yes, I want to install that. Uh, some magic happens, and now I actually have it running in an application window instead of the you know instead of the browser. Uh, you can all also see. Let's see. I'll just move this out of the way. You can also see that it appears here uh, in my Chrome apps. Uh, I can just install it. Uh, drag the icon from there to here, and now I have it running here. So if I close it, 
quit. I have an icon. And when I desire a hot cup of joe in the middle of my workday, I can just click this and it opens like an application. So you have, if you have stuff that you are, your customers are using constantly, like, uh, I don't know, like uh, maybe an admin interface or something like that, that they constantly want to use, they don't want to be distracted by the browser window, you can just add the mani manifest, manifest file in any of your uh, projects, and this is the functionality that, that you get. It doesn't require any, like too much, too much effort, uh, obviously, if you just add the manifest and the service worker to any website, it doesn't magically get the capabilities, obviously, but you, ca you can make it installable pretty easily. So I'll just uh, put this here and see if we can continue. Cool. So this particular PWA application, uh, it's 99.84% smaller than the equivalent iOS application. It's, it's like crazy. You need to have like a several megabytes, like tens of megabytes of application installed in order just to order a cup of coffee. And this thing can do that in a, on a, in a fraction of resources and, 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 uh, and so on. So based on this, and it's really easy to get, to the, like I want to emphasize it, that it's really easy to get users to install this if you use the banner. I mean, only, only the pro people know that you can have this magical icon somewhere and so on, but the banners are used to advertise it. Uh, so the main thing is that you get with this, pro like progressivity mm, uh, gives you this like really quick access to some of the main benefits. This is the installability, you get the icon and so on. But really the true value comes from the client side app features. It's just a, ba it's just a fancy bookmark. It's nice for uh, conversions and so on, but you actually get, uh, when you use the client side app features like the push notification, the caching, whatever, you, you can make this behave like real applications. Uh, so instead of just taking your basic Drupal site and slapping this on, you actually should uh, design the application as a progressive web application from the start. There's a, like a, there's a difference between the uh, static website and then you have the single page application and so on. So there, there's, there's like a, it's not the same thing. This is like the, the PWA explicitly def requires you to have the manifest and the, and the service worker, but it also gives you a lot of, a lot of like benefits. But I think that it would be easy if you have existing, uh, existing headless implementations, if you have uh, existing single page applications or whatnot, you probably can convert them to PWAs pretty easily. Just be aware of the problems with, I mentioned with Apple. So what can you do with it? This is what the customers are going to do. So yeah, we have this installable application and, yeah, and, and, what, and, and so on. So, they really don't understand the fact that we can do shit ton of things with JavaScript nowadays. I mean, you, you, like regarding the possibilities, you have a mobile application that works using the same code base than your web application. Everyone needs to have the web application anyways. That's just how things are nowadays. But now instead of just paying for your uh, Drupal agency and paying for your iOS agency and paying for your Android agency, you just have the same code base, single co code base to maintain. You can update it whenever you want. There's like uh, several days of queues uh, for you to push your application to the app stores. So you can just avoid this all, all this thing. You can have uh, internal applications for your companies, ex, like extranet or intranets, for example, that you, you or the customers, IT people control. It means that basically, for example, if you have warehouse workers that want to, they need to use some, uh, some applications to, for example, scan packages or do stuff like that. Uh, and you don't want them to like uh, build a custom application and then push it to iOS store and then everyone needs to install that because you don't control that shit. But you can put the application to your intranet and the people just access using their devices, they access the intranet page and then they download the application to your phone and then they have it on the go. And whenever you need to do updates to that application, you can just push them there and it gets uh, distributed 
immediately to the people using that. So this is really perfect for internal applications, for example, that the IT team needs to be able to control that. Uh, then, of course, like uh, development is expensive, you can just convert your idea into service really easily. And then if you want to go to the app stores, you have services, uh, third-party services like Bubble Wrap. That's, an, uh, that's a platform that you can use to take your PWA application, wrap it nicely in a native container, and then push it to the app stores. I think that there's a similar system for uh, iOS applications as well. So you still get the benefit of the single code base, but you, still, but you need to, like, you, you can put your stuff in app stores. I'm not sure how the Apple decision to hate PWAs and open internet and everything that's dear to me affects this, but basically, basically, I think that this is this has been this has been a, like this type of thing has be, has been around for 15 years. The uh, but uh, I think that like uh, I don't remember how it goes, but like basically wrapping JavaScript to native containers is not really new thing. So regarding what you can do with this. This is a list of the of the APIs. The customer says that yeah, but it's a web application. I can I can't really do stuff with that. You can say that well yeah, uh, I have uh, bolded some of these. <coughs> I don't remember why. It's been a while, uh, and you can't really see the bolding, I guess, <laughs> because it's e even is difficult for me to see. But I mean, you can do stuff like 3D canvas stuff. You can do web application. You can access the clipboard. You can do payment requests. You can do, do SMS OTP, like on one-time password input attributes, meaning that your web application can read your SMSs. If you have a one-time password, you can send the code, uh, the code to the, uh, as an SMS. Your web application can actually read the code directly from the SMS using this API. You have the web notification, real-time communication sockets, I mean, camera, full camera and uh, microphone access, so you can actually scan barcodes. You can synthesis speech and recognize speech. So there's a lot of things. You just need to make sure that the platforms you want to support support all the APIs. Uh, this is a long pizza list of th things, but uh, I picked some of the more interesting ones. So for example, I mean, access to phone contacts. Sounds nice. Uh, using a PlayStation controller for your mobile, uh, serious mobile application. Uh, you get access to the clipboard. You get access to device. Uh, storage, we have the sharing content to other application, background processing and so on. So these are the most relevant in my opinion from the business perspective. These are what the customers probably are thinking when they compare JavaScript applications to native applications. And you can do all these things. I mean, you, you, these are not specifically PWA APIs. These are generic APIs. The only thing Apple decided not to support, in my, as far as I know, I might be really wrong about this, is uh, the service worker, so you can't really install the application on your phone anywhere. But if you access the so like the app.starbucks.com type of address with your, uh, with your Apple browser, you still can use the application and you can use these APIs. These are independent from the PWA concept, except for the, I think, except for the, uh, the background processing and the, and the push notifications, I think. But yeah, you, but you can do many of these things still. Uh, that was it. 59, I made it in 20 minutes. I was really worried. Last time I had this presentation, it was in Dev Days uh, last summer. And it was, I think it was a 45 minute presentation. So, so yeah, <laughs> we still have 30 seconds for questions. <laughs> no, good. Yes, thank you everyone. <laughs>